The main difference between primary data that you collect yourself and secondary data is generally you're much more restricted in what you can collect if you're collecting your own data simply because of the, the level of resources available to you. So that uh, I created a data set along with some colleagues uh, on content analysis data of newspapers. That was relatively easy to do because it's just a question of buying the newspapers and carrying out the analysis, doing the counting and so on. It didn't involve, for example, traveling to interview people or things like that. In secondary data analysis, uh, it's possible to use techniques like computer-assisted personal interviewing, whereby a handheld computer guides the interviewer through the routing of questions that can be used for different kinds of respondent in a survey. Uh, the kind of resources that can go into the creation of secondary data are usually much larger than the level of resources that an individual researcher would have at his or her disposal in a, in a university. And so more and more quantitative research uses secondary data just because the quality of the data that's produced is much higher. It's based on very well drawn uh, random samples that can take advantage of things like stratified sampling or cluster sampling to maximize the value of the data that's gathered. Uh, cognitive testing is done of the questions used to try and make sure that the questions are actually measuring what you hope they are measuring. Um, the data is properly cleaned and now because of the, the web and the, adva the technological advances in information technology over the last 10-15 years means that centrally created data is much more easy to disseminate and get access to uh, from individual universities. It's no longer a question, for example, of sending away for computer tapes and things like that. You can go on the web and download a data set in a matter of minutes.